what we're going to do today is we're going to use Punnett squares to cross individuals with certain traits to see what their offspring might look like. Now we're going to talk about a guy who figured out a lot of facts that you have to memorize, but he figured out these facts without knowing anything about chromosomes, about meiosis. Um, they pretty much just knew that offspring had traits related to their parents, but they weren't sure how that all worked. So Gregor Mendel's known as the father of genetics. So one thing that he figured out and that you now have memorized is that for some traits, one allele is dominant to the other. So he called that the law of dominance. He basically thought that all individuals had two alleles for every trait, and he called them factors. We didn't have the word allele yet. That there was two factors for every trait, and one can cover up the other one. So he said he created this law of dominance. Now, remember, we know there's actually more going on. There's some traits that show incomplete dominance or sex length and so on, but he didn't know about those. He thought there was always a dominant allele and always a recessive allele. Okay? So he figured out um, in one of his crosses that tall was dominant to short. And so if you had a code for tall and a code for short, you would end up looking tall. So law of dominance is his first um, contribution. Second thing that he figured out is that you have two codes for every trait, but you only pass on one. So for example, if you're big B, little b, for a trait, then when you make sperm or you make eggs, those should only end up with one B in them, either the big B or the little b, if you're heterozygous for the trait. So through meiosis, and again, he didn't know about meiosis, the Bs get split up. Remember, they partner up, and then eventually this X goes this way, and this X goes this way. They get separated, or they get segregated during meiosis. So he knew that you have two codes, and somehow they got separated or segregated. So it's called the law of segregation. So that you only pass on one of your two codes to the next generation. Now we know this is occurring because of meiosis. Gregor Mendel didn't know that. So again, his is second law. So he has the law of dominance, then he came up with the law of segregation. Now, for the next one, the law of independent assortment, we're going to look at a video first and watch what we mean by the law of segregation here. So here I have a cell and its diploid number is four. Now the cell is going to signal to divide by meiosis, so it's going to copy its DNA. So each one is going to get copied. So we're going to see four X's here in a little bit. Now remember, in meiosis, is after the DNA is copied, so here we're getting it's copied, it's replicated, S phase. Then in prophase one, they go and they find their partner. Remember, you squared ants first in meiosis, okay? And then they line up. Now, how they line up can be different every single time. So sometimes, as you're about ready to see, um, when these line up in metaphase one, do you see how the little s lined up with that capital Y? Now the next time this cell, or cell that's genetically identical to it, lines up those chromosomes during meiosis, that might not happen. They might align them differently. So now the little s is aligned with the Y. So what we're going to see here is these cells are going to go through meiosis. So we're going to get four cells on one side and four cells on the other. And it's going to show you that depending on how the homologous chromosomes line up in the middle, that's going to affect the variation or the genetic combinations that you're going to see in these gametes. Okay? So now we're in metaphase 2, and then the sister chromatids get pulled apart. And now we're going to see that first cell is going to make four gametes on this side. And here was another cell genetically identical making gametes and you can see that they're different just because of how they lined up. So the law of independent assortment is his third law and what this simply means is that chromosomes align independently of one another. They do not purposely align with other chromosomes and line up the same way each time. Alright now we're going to take a look at 
his famous experiment that kind of started this all is he took two plants and crossed them, and he, and he took a tall one and a short one, and he crossed them. And by the way, this first generation is called the P1 generation. So he crossed the tall and the short, and Mendel thought he was going to get all medium plants, just, just by using some logic and some reason, but he didn't get that at all. In this next generation, which is called the F1 generation, he got no mediums and no shorts. He got all tall. So it's like the short completely disappeared. So then what he decided to do is he decided to take two tall plants from this F1 generation. So he crossed two F1s. And by the way, the offspring that you get from crossing two F1s is going to be called the F2 generation. And this is what he got. Three-fourths were tall and one-fourth were short, just as short as that original P1 plant that he started with. So he learned that tall is dominant to short. So this is one way that he figured out that some alleles are completely dominant to other ones. So he figured out this trait shows complete dominance in plants, pea plants to be specific. Now, we're going to use Punnett squares to predict what offspring are going to look like. So here's a Punnett square, and what this does is it allows you to pass on one code out of the two from each parent. So sometimes this tall plant that he started with will pass on a chromosome with a capital T. Sometimes he'll pass on the other chromosome with the other capital T. Sometimes this plant will pass on a little t to its offspring, or this chromosome that has a little t on as well. So what we're symbolizing here is these are offspring. So offspring has two codes. They get one letter from one parent and one letter from the other. So if this one passes on this big T and this one passes on little t, then this is going to be the genotype of some of the offspring. And we're going to bring them down and take them across. Big T, little t, big T, little t, big T, little t. So again, he ended up with all tall. Now, you can see here I've got several things. And every problem you do, I'm not going to ask you all of these because it'll take you forever to work one problem. But you really have to pay close attention to what I'm asking you. Am I asking you about genotypes on problems? Or am I asking you about phenotypes? And sometimes I want you to report the answers as percents or fractions and ratios. So you need to be able to go um, from like percents to fractions or, or fractions to ratio or maybe a ratio to fractions. So for this first one, it says offspring genotypes. So genotypes are going to be the letters and it wants a percent. So you would write 100% big T little t. Over here, it says phenotype. Well, we have a tall and a tall and a tall and a tall. So we're going to write 100% tall, as tall as a phenotype. If it's asked as fractions, on this one, we'd write 4 out of 4, big T, little t, because it's in their genotypes. We would write 4 out of 4, tall. Now, we also could write 1 out of 1, big T, little t, or one out of one tall. You can reduce. Now, we're going to talk about ratios here in a little bit, but first we're going to come over to this other problem. In his second cross, remember, he took two of his F1s. These are the F1 generation. Took two of them. Remember, they were tall. So here is an F1 plant, and here is an F1 plant, and he crossed them. So Again, this is showing you that sometimes that tall plant's going to cap, going to pass on its capital or its dominant allele, and then sometimes it's going to make gametes with the lowercase allele, which is the code for short. This one can pass on to be tall, and sometimes it passes on to be short. It only passes on one of its two codes each time. So here's our offspring, and again, these are going to be the F2 generation. So this one is going to get a tall from one parent, a tall from the other parent. Big T, big T. This one's big T, little t. Big T, little t, and little t, little t. Now, let's play, pay close attention to what you're asking. So, let's talk about genotypes. Genotypes are the letters, and it says as percents. So, we've got three different letter combinations. We've got big T, big T, we have big T, little t, and then we have little t, little t. So, we'd write 25% big T, big T, 50% big T, little t, and then 25% little t, little t. Now, as fractions, we would write 1 fourth big T, big T, 
two out of the four are big T, little t, and then one out of the four is little t, little t. Now, let's talk about the ratio. When you are trying to come up with a ratio for the offspring, you need to start with fractions. You need to check that the denominators are the same on your two or your three different fractions that you have here. And then you just take the top number. So the ratio that we would get is we'd get one, big T, big T, and that semicolon is, you say two, so one, big T, big T, to two, big T, little t, to one, little t, little t. Now let's go over here, and we're going to then do this for the phenotypes. Now remember, phenotypes is what you see, and I see a tall, and a tall, and a tall, and a short. So we would say as percents, we would say 75% tall, 25% short, oops, S-H-O-R-T. As fractions, it's not going to match the fractions you have over here. So we write 3 out of 4, the phenotype tall, and then 1 out of 4 is going to be short. Now, as a ratio, we check the denominators have to be the same, so then we can just take the top numbers. So we'd write 3 tall to 1 short. Now that I'm going to go back over here, now that we know that we have to use fractions and turn them into ratios, let's figure out what the ratio would be over here. A lot of students are going to say it's 4 to 4, and that's not, that's incorrect. If you think about it, isn't it 4 out of 4, big T, little t, 0 out of 4, big T, big T, and then 0 out of 4, little t, little t. So again, make sure my denominators are the same, and then you're going to take the top number. I always like to write the heterozygous one in the middle. So I can write 0 t, t to 4 big T little t to 0 little t little t. Now, I could also write 0 to 1 to 1 because I could reduce these three fractions. 1 over 1, 0 out of 1, and 0 out of 1. So then I just take the top number. So it would be 0 and then a 1 and then a 0. Okay, And that's okay to do as well. Um, we'd get something similar over here. We would say, now let's go ahead and we can reduce it. So this reduces, this also equals 1 out of 1, sorry, 1 out of 1 tall and 0 out of 1 short. So I could say my ratio is for every tall, you're not going to get any short is what that ratio means. Now we're going to look at some typical genetic problems. We're going to use some Punnett squares. The trick to this is you have to read your problems very carefully and figure out what the parents are going to be. And now if you mess up a single parent, then all this work is going to be for nothing. So we want to make sure we start correct. It says the allele for tongue rolling is dominant to the allele for non-tongue rolling. Determine the following if a heterozygous tongue roller has children with a non-tongue roller. So here is one parent, they're heterozygous. That would be their genotype. The only way to be a non-tongue roller is if you have two codes for non-tongue rolling. So sometimes this parent passes on a big R and sometimes a little R. Sometimes this one's a little R and passes on a little R. Bring them down and take them across. Now let's pay attention. I'm asking for phenotypes and a percent. So phenotypes are what you see. So I have a roll, a roll, a non, and a non. So I'm going to write 50% can roll their tongue, and 50% are non-rollers. All right, let's go down to the next one. It says the color of pea plant flowers shows incomplete dominance. Flowers can be red, pink, or white. Two pink flowers are crossed. So now let's kind of analyze what they're giving us here. Um, so they're saying, okay, here is your genotype for red. Now I'm looking, I see three things. So yeah, this is incomplete. I've got a red, I've got a middle, which is pink, and then I have white. So you have to know that pink is the middle. The pink one must have a code for red and a code for white, because that's how you would get pink. 
And then my genotype for any white ones will be R prime. R prime, they have two codes for white. So it says two pink flowers are crossed. Use the Punnett square below to show the results of a cross between these two. So I have two pink flowers. So we must have an R and an R prime as one pink flower plant, and then the other one is R, R prime as well. So what's kind of interesting is when this one passes on the R, this, this regular R, it's actually passing on to be red, and sometimes it passes on to be white. There's no chromosome that says to be pink. You only have red and white. And then this one can pass on to be red and pass on to be white, even though it's pink. So now we bring them down and we take them across. Okay. So since we wrote our letters like this, then that's going to help us remember they're incomplete. I don't want you to think red can cover up white, and we don't want to give white a little r. We want to use that r prime for it. So this one we're asking for genotypes, and we're going to go as fractions. So genotypes are the letters. So we're going to write 1 out of 4, r, r, 2 out of 4, r, r prime, and then 1 out of 4, r prime, r prime. Now that we have them as fractions, we're going to then write a ratio. And so again, just check that the denominators are all the same, and they are. And so then you're just going to take your top numbers. So we're going to say 1 RR to 2 RR prime to 1 R prime R prime. All right, the next one says a yellow pansy, which is a type of flower, um, is crossed with a blue pansy. Now just don't start doing your Punnett square. Keep reading. So if offspring are produced, that have petals with spots of blue and yellow. So what this is telling you is this is a trait that shows codominance. Because I, if you pass on a blue and you pass on a yellow, and the offspring then are blue and yellow, then it's showing codominance between those two alleles. So it says use a Punnett square to determine the probability that blue offspring would be produced from a cross between a blue and yellow pansy and a pansy that is blue. So here's one parent. Here's the other parent. So to be a blue and yellow pansy, you have to have a code for blue and a code for yellow. And to be blue, then you have two codes. Both of them are going to be blue. So sometimes this passes on blue, sometimes yellow. The blue one can only pass on to be blue. Bring them down and take them across. Okay. It says, now let's go back up to our problem. It says, use a Punnett square to determine the probability that blue offspring will produce from a cross between those two. Report your answer as a percent. So your answer should be, as a percent, it would be 50%. You have a 50% chance of having blue offspring if you cross those two individuals. Here's another problem I could ask. It says, what fraction of the F1s will be homozygous? Okay. And so the F1s are the offspring that you're going to get here. And in this case, it's going to be the ones that are in the box. So what fraction of the F1s will be homozygous? Well, we've got homozygous, homozygous. This would be hetero and hetero fraction. So we'd say 2 out of 4 would be considered homozygous. Or half of the offspring would be homozygous. 